Hello and welcome ladies and gents, this is Unix Designs bringing you a new project file. Today I will walk you through the modifying the look and feel of the project file, as well as point out a few key things that are essential to get your animation working as well. Let's begin by taking a look at our preliminary requirements. First uh, we will need of course Adobe After Effects version CS5 or higher, first up flare packs globe plugin a trap code particular plugin and a vector shape or path based logo now you can create paths from a jpeg file by masking by hand but the latter option is recommended i'm going to go over on how everything is set up first i extracted the paths of the letter and converted them into motion paths on my light emitter here then i use particular to take a look at that light and use its path to spawn particles from. Then, after a few settings tweaking and color correction, I got the final result. So let's take a look on modifying the project file. So, first let's create our text. Okay, after our text has been created, let's create paths from this one. So right click on your text and click create masks from text. Hey guys, there's one thing I forgot to mention. If you have a logo, like an Illustrator file, to extract paths from it, you need to open that file into Illustrator, select all the elements, and copy it by pressing Ctrl C. Then paste it into another layer, it doesn't matter what kind it is, but I'm going to add a shape layer, and paste it in. Here you have the masks, and what to do with them, you can see in the rest of the video. Okay, now press M to reveal the masks paths, you will see that we have 4 in total. That's why I would recommend not having too much letters or elements in your logo or text, because that will result in more time for you to set everything up. Let's observe the paths for now. You can see that the bigger square of the path means that it is our initial point of start. Now you can modify from which point the animation starts, so uh, I'm gonna modify the start for this uh, dot of the explanation mark. So I'm gonna select this point right here, the leftmost point, right click, go mask and shape path and set first vertex, okay? And I think that the start point for I letter, uh, the bottom left corner would be great. So right click, mask and shape path, set first vertex. Now after our paths have been set up, we need to convert those paths to light position keyframes. So let's create a light. The default settings should look good, uh, let's set the type to point light, if you want you can set a different type, it doesn't matter. Let's reveal the position property of our light, copy the mask's path of the element, click on the position of the light, press Ctrl V to enter it. Now I would like to shift these keyframes to one second just to get that starting position not right at the first to start to eh, just uh, to make it look a little bit um, nicer I think. Uh, so let's do the same for the remaining elements control d reveal the position property reveal the keyframes select the next element uh, copy the mask path and paste that in repeat that process until you get all of it in there now I would recommend when you're pasting in the paths to motion paths uh, to delete the position keyframes of the duplicated light because that will result in some glitching later on. So delete those keyframes and paste in the new path. Now if you observe these keyframes you can see that these keyframes are linear keyframes and these do not deliver the quite as appealing animation as it would be with Easy Ease keyframe. So let's convert these keyframes to Easy Ease by right-clicking, Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease. Now, 
It is a personal preference of mine, but I will select these last keyframes, go to the grab editor, and draw the handles to the left, to the max. And that results in a change of momentum that I really like. So, let's continue. I'm going to delete these uh, original text layers, because we have our text animation set up. Now, if you have a one element that is really great, what you need to do is just rename that first light to one dot emitter, and that will emit particles. Here you go. What happens if you have two elements? What do you do then? Well, what do you do? You select these layers, duplicate them by pressing Ctrl D, put them up, and then just go to each duplicated layer, go to options, and the part where the light name starts with, set that to 2 emitter, 3 emitter, 2 emitter for each. And that uh, works for as many elements as you have in your logo or text. I would also like to point out that I have already made a few more preset particular layers and that does make your light a little bit easier just type 2 dot emitter and that will animate your second light and type in all the rest now this is the final effect there are a few things that i would like to point out for you guys now when you go to the beginning you will see that particles are already being emitted when the lights aren't moving so, the way you counter that is open up each light intensity setting by pressing double A. Uh, I'm gonna maximize the window by pressing the tilde key. And now we need to animate the intensity property for each light. I'm going to reveal the position property for the rest of the lights by pressing shift key. You can see that the keyframe is right here. I'm going to set the initial intensity keyframe to be at 100, go frame back by pressing page up, set the first keyframe to be the second keyframe in the back to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. Now you can see that that problem is fixed and our animation is as before. Another thing I would like to point out is you can see that our final result is a little bit intense shall we say now there is a way to counter that since this project is 32 bits per channel we can add an exposure effect on it so right click new adjustment layer go to the effect controls right click color correction exposure now, if you reduce exposure, the luminance does decrease in a nice and realistic manner. Keep in mind that there are few post-processing layers that are put on to improve the look of the animation. There is glow, color correction, and as well as a polish layer with some sharpening on it. What you do need to look at is the glow layer. It has its own exposure setting on it to control the glow intensity. So, I would recommend to reduce the exposure as needed by a few increments till you get the desired result. So, in this case, I believe that minus 3 would do great. Yeah, that looks really nice. Now, you can proceed from here to your render. I won't go from here how to do that. I'm leaving that part to you. Here's a cool concept to think about. You can animate the camera through the particles since they are 3D. So I would like to see some cool camera moves from you guys. Uh, that may change the whole feel and look of the effect entirely. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys to get around the project file. Please like this video, share this video with your friends if you can and favorite this video, I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you later.